We finally got seven glorious minutes of Assassin's Creed Mirage gameplay going over many of the things that many of us have had many questions about and providing mostly relief as well as some things that we kind of expected were going to be this way, but you know, we're going to get into it here in a second. Now remember, if you do enjoy today's video, don't forget to leave it a big old like. If you enjoy content like this, you want more like it, be sure to check out that button underneath the video. It used to be red. It still says subscribe. But last but not least, got to thank my channel members. You guys help make these videos possible. If you want to join, get access to the exclusive perks that they get, be sure to check out that blue join button. Anyway, let's begin. First things first, and I think the thing on everyone's mind, and also one of the very first things that we see in the trailer, is going to be the parkour. Now the parkour in this game seems to be pretty darn linear, and it's as we thought, we did not see any side ejects or back ejects. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're not in the game, uh, but I would think at this point they would have shown them off by now if they were, who knows. That being said, what we see in the trailer is quite linear. There's plenty of pathways. You can even see as Basim is running around Baghdad that there are intersecting pathways where as he's going one direction, you can see where potential if you were coming from the other direction, you'd be going down a different pathway all on its own to get to a different place in the city. It looks pretty quick. It looks to use uh, a lot of Valhalla and I, I do see a little bit of Unity animation in there, potentially just like a tad of it. Uh, not a lot of the flippity dippity stuff, but kind of spider manning up a wall looks fairly similar to that that being said the one bit of depth that we did see briefly in the trailer was there's a couple of instances of Bassam having a burst of speed now i don't know if this is going to necessarily have to do with parkour i don't know if it's going to change how we parkour about the city or if it's something that's pretty much exclusive to running on the ground but it does seem where Bassam was kind of running to get away from the guards and then parkouring through the city towards the end of the trailer we see a couple of times he gets those bursts of speed they're not used in the context of parkour they're used more so in the context of escapability and running towards certain areas so i'm not sure if that's something that we can use maybe to leap greater distances or if it's just something again more for escapability than the actual parkour itself now one thing that i was very 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 pleasantly surprised at is the amount of depth that went into the stealth gameplay the stealth gameplay looks just delicious in this game i mean it looks fantastic not only in the escapability aspect where it seems like there's some sandboxy elements to the city where you can pull down small structures like we saw at the beginning of the trailer to cover your escape i guess you can consider that part of stealth you're kind of hiding from the guards at that point but on top of things such as that for escapability we do have access to a wide array of tools that are going to help us in our stealth gameplay i think one of the things i i noticed the most was when we're using the blow dart when we're infiltrating the fort around the middle point of the trailer you can see that there are quick equip tools that we can have access to it looks like a couple different types of bombs and Maybe that poison mine that we see at the very end. I think having quick access to those things is just going to really help with the overall gameplay flow of trying to play in a stealthy manner. Almost like not necessarily combat stealth, but just being able to play quickly. And if you get into a sticky situation, it's very smooth to get out of it in a satisfying way. I'm really liking the kind of vibe that they're going with this, with the stealth gameplay. It also seems like there will be civilians inside of the palaces that you can blend with and they'll kind of gossip about what's maybe going on hopefully relevant to the mission that you will be trying to accomplish at that time now speaking on these civilians i don't believe that the civilians that we saw in the trailer were a faction but we do get a look at the faction contracts and one thing i do want to point out about those is it seems like those mysterious tokens they talked about a couple of days ago in the back to the roots trailer it seems like in order to acquire those tokens, they're, they're almost more like favors. If you do these contracts, then that faction will owe you a favor. It's just a way to kind of track it in a form of currency in the game. So I think that's really, really cool. And I think it'll add a little bit more to that immersive side of these factions that these factions aren't necessarily just loyal to the assassins as they are. They're people with their own interests as well. And if you accomplish the task that they are looking for people to accomplish, then they will owe you a favor as well. And that would come in the form of covering you in some way during a mission. Another thing that is going to greatly aid in the stealth gameplay is the Eagle Vision. Now, Eagle Vision, if you just looked at it from a basic point of view, is, of course, pretty much the same as it's always been. It highlights your enemies. You go into this cool little dark zone going on. You can see hiding spots, that type of thing. But one thing if you're really paying attention that you would have noticed is you can see the vision cone 
of different guards and enemies so that you can more easily stay out of their line of sight. I think that's really cool because there's a lot of times in games, especially games like Unity, where it can be a little bit buggy at times. It can feel like the guards are seeing you around walls or something, or maybe you're not quite sure if you're really going to be in their vision cone. And I think having this ability is just going to aid in a bit more consistency and able to get through areas uh, where it's not so much a gamble that the guard may or may not see you, you can be a little bit more sure of that sort of thing. Speaking of eagles, let's talk about the eagle and Kidu, who makes a brief appearance in the trailer. At the start of the contract that Basim takes on about halfway through the trailer, we see Enkido go up, and it seems like the marksman that gets him out of the area has pretty good range. It seems like if there are marksmen in the area, they're going to be quite powerful, and you're not really going to be able to go in and just scout the entire fort very quickly. And to be able to clear the skies for your eagle and Kido, you're going to have to go and take out that marksman. I think that's really cool. I was getting a little tired of the eagle drone thing. And it seems like in this game, it's more of just kind of a quick scout tool. Whenever you do take out the marksman, you can kind of see ahead and maybe see your major objectives or some treasure, but you're not going to be able to mark every single enemy within a mile radius. That's where things like your standard eagle vision will come into play. So it's a little bit more limited. I'm not anti-eagle. I just, I'd prefer the traditional eagle vision in these games. And it's nice to to have as a tool, but again, I'm not exactly in love with the Eagles being in every single game. Now, one thing you may also notice, and I wanted to include this in the stealth section because I believe this still applies to that. It seems like anytime Bassam sits down on a bench somewhere, he can pass time then, which I think is really cool because this can aid in your timing of different attacks. It's almost like how Bayek, once you unlock that skill, you can just sit down and pass the time wherever you're standing. I think that'll be really nice. So if you do want to plan for an attack at night, you can just pass the time and then approach at night or whenever you do want to actually go in and take out your target or steal something or reconnaissance, whatever different mission types there may be. Maybe there are guard shifts, so we can go and maybe time it based on that. So whenever the guards are switching shifts, that means they're not on the rooftops. That means we can pass the time until then and uh, try to take advantage of that time of day. Now, one thing of controversy is going to be the assassin focus. We get a glimpse at that, or not even a glimpse. We get to see how it's going to work. It does appear that you'll maybe be able to get three. It seems like four, and this is early in the game. So it seems like you'll be able to start off taking out about four guards with the assassin focus. I'm not sure if the distance covered is part of what the cost is at the bottom it's like you got a bar with five tabs on it but it seems like the distance that was covered you were only to, able to take out the three and have about one and a half bars left so again i don't know if distance covered factors into the cost of that but it is quite powerful it is seemingly layered into Basim's perception of his own speed in the animus almost like an adrenaline rush type of thing maybe it's something that ties into him being a sage I'm not sure, but I'm sure some people will, of course, take issue with it. And I don't necessarily blame you. It is something that seems very powerful. And it seems like something that is very much borderline on that mystical side of things when they're saying this game is a return to roots. So you can definitely see why some may take issue with it. Personally, it's probably not something I'm going to use all that often just because I prefer to approach things in a more traditional manner. But if it's you know, something where I'm in a major pinch, maybe I will pop it off and just see how it feels. Now we do get a very quick glimpse at the combat, which is pretty nice to say that we only see a quick glimpse of the combat because honestly, the amount of stealth stuff they showed off really kind of scratching all the right places for me. It does seem like counter killing is back, so Basim will be quite lethal. Again, seemingly from the start, as we see in the trailer, he counters the guard and then can immediately go into a kill animation. Now it does not look like a lot of the early games like the Ezio games when you stand and hold the counter button and then you can just do the kill animation. It seems a lot more like you actually have to time the counter and then you can go into the kill animation. So something much closer to Assassin's Creed 3 or Black Flag while also being something like the, the free form combat of the RPG games. It, it seems like its own unique style and I don't hate it. I think it could be Really nice to get away from the stat-based grindy combat and go back to more of that quick lethal style of combat. Lastly, as Bassam escapes the fort, we do get a glimpse at the pickpocket prompt. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work because we don't get to see Bassam actually do it, but he does fade away into the Unity-esque crowd in an Altair-esque fashion from the AC1 trailer. 
And I thought that was a pretty nice little little vibe to, to end the trailer on. I was pretty happy to see that. I think that kind of captures a lot of what my thoughts are and the, the feeling that I want them to go for, for what this game is supposed to be. Overall, I was very happy with a lot of what was shown off in the, in the gameplay trailer. I do want to talk about the story trailer in a separate video because I think there's a lot to unpack there. And I think the direction that they're going with the story is something that I've been wanting them to explore for a long time. But uh, again, that'll be a separate video, so make sure you subscribe for that. But generally, like I said, I'm very happy with what we've seen from the gameplay so far, and I cannot wait for October 12th so we can actually get hands-on with it and uh, get to exploring Baghdad, because this this looks like something I, I could really put a lot of time into. Um, again, it's not perfect. There are, of course, things where if they're building this game from scratch, I would want to see differently, but considering what this is, I'm more than happy with what we've seen from it and what they've been able to do with it it looks like exactly the kind of game that i've been waiting several several years for and i just like i said i, I can't wait to get hands on so anyway let me know down below what you think of assassin's creed mirage's gameplay let's have a conversation about it what would you change about it what do you like about it thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video